Good morning, everybody. We interrupt your local uh, free speech TV for a little bit of local Missoula TV. It's Wake Up Missoula time. I'm your host, Scott Ruff. I'm going to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula and beyond in my bi-weekly, uh, bi-daily morning show that happens every Wednesday and Friday from 9 a.m. till 10 a.m.? Question mark? All right, let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. I got a lot of show to go through today, some city council stuff, where you may be getting some money back if you were ever in court for any reason um, over the last uh, eight, 15 years. So I'll talk more about that later. So currently it is 36 degrees outside. You have that 20% chance of rain, but it's going to be sunny most of the day. Um, tonight you have that 40% chance of rain, so you can see a little bit of a rain front going through the city, uh, through the valley of Missoula, um, with highs in the 60s, and your lows are going to be as low as 30 by uh, the time you reach Thursday night. Uh, Friday, you can expect those highs to be jumping back up to 69 and lows into the 40s. So by the Saturday, you can have a semi lukewarm um, weekend. Um, it's 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 probably a good chance to be wearing a sweater. It's good sweater weather if you guys are interested in being out and about. And speaking of out and about, there's been uh, some reports of a bear uh, in the Mission Mountains. So um, a couple, a uh, local couple in the Mission Mountain area set up a couple of cameras that are uh, basically motion censored. And they, what they were able to catch were uh, basically a family of grizzly bears going through their neighborhood. So uh, th here is a couple just examples of some of the things that they've been doing. There you go. See a couple bears being captured on their uh, motion sensor cameras. Um, apparently there's a creek that goes along their home, which comes down from the mountains. So bears kind of frequently you, uh, go through their uh, valley and their area. So they set up a couple cameras and the, what they're able to catch is a couple just bears just chilling. And it's really cool is, is that they set up their own Facebook page where they have uh, many different um, captured areas, and as you can see there, that the, uh, the one of the bears is checking out the cameras. There's a lot of cool footage from this as well. If you guys check it out, it's a uh, Grizz Cam Mission. Uh, it's a Mission Valley, Montana Grizz Cam. That's Grizz with two Z's. You guys can check out all their stuff on their Facebook page. You know, here's another one from uh, a creek. See, so just a bear crossing. Just hanging out. Um, there's a couple other ones. There's uh, one over here. I, th I, th I definitely like this one because it's nice. It kind of shows the Mystery Mountains in the background. Sees a couple bears just wandering through. Yeah. So they're just neighbors, just passing through. And you guys can check this out anytime, anywhere. All you got to do is go to the Facebook page uh, with Mission. Valley Montana Grizz Camp, and yeah, they, it's been great. They've had a lot of stuff, and they, they basically uh, as early as August, um, actually July, they have pretty much all sorts of bear stuff happening there. They've been doing this for quite a while now. Um, a lot of good stuff. So um, let me tell you a little bit more information about this. The site has one of several creeks that drain uh, the, uh, the steep mountains. Grizz grizzly bears follow the waterway down to the valley floor, often right past the house of Susie and Bob Thort. If you, uh, you can find all the best grizz cams by going to Mission Valley Grizz Cam. That's grizz with two Zs. In other news, uh, Helena High School currently has enrolled about 1,500 students, and about 400 and 500 of, the, uh, of them typically come from East Helena East each year. But East now East Helena students will soon have their own school um, in their own community as voters recently approved a $29.5 million bond to build a high school in the area. Helena High School is basically going to be split in half as a new school will be added to the Helena area. So there will be Helena Capital and now East Helena High School. They plan on offering uh, high school classes uh, as East Valley Middle School as early as August 28th, 2019. And of course, in other news, Trump Jr. Uh, not only did is Donald, has Donald Trump visited uh, the Great Falls in Billings. Trump Jr. will be visiting Bozeman next Tuesday to promote Rosendale. Rosendale is in what's expected to be a close race with incumbent um, U.S. Senator John Tester, a Democrat who is seeking his third term. The president has already come to Montana twice. Trump Jr. also held several rallies across the state to support a Republican U.S. Uh, Representative Greg Gianforte in May of 2017 special election. Montana is one of 10 states that Trump won in 2016, where the incumbent um, Democrat is seeking re-election. Trump has also targeted Tester after uh, the senator made public allegations against Trump's nominee uh, to head Veterans Affairs, Rear Admiral Ronnie Jackson. 
Jackson later pulled his name from the nomination and is currently under investigation from the Pentagon. In national news, a Japanese man will be the first man ever um, since 1972 to shoot the moon. Um, although uh, billionaire uh, y y Yusaku uh, Mizawa uh, will not land on the moon, he will be making a loop around it. Um, Forbes ranks uh, Mizawa, Mizawa as the 18th richest person in Japan. While he may not be a household name here in the United States, in Japan he's basically made the equivalent of their Amazon, known as Portal Zozo Town, is Japan's largest online realtor. He is best known for elsewhere for paying a record $110 million last year for a 1982 painting of the late Jean Michael Bastique. Um, the price tag for uh, Mizawa's ticket is in, isn't completely clear, and SpaceX did not make that information public. However, I must say that uh, Mizawa uh, brought the idea to him, and that the Japanese billionaire's money will help fund um, development of Big Falcon Rocket, or BFR, which will, the company plans to use for lunar flight and eventually to shoot for Mars. So, of course, although this looks good on paper, tests will have to be done to ensure the flights are plausible for this to take place in the future. So that's kind of what's currently going going on with Elon Musk and SpaceX. They got a billionaire to invest in it. So we're going to see how this all turns out in the future. So that's just, uh, exciting news that's happening in and around the city of Missoula. But here's some exciting programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. Um, this, these next couple of days, uh, we also have a, a Russell Street update through uh, Joel's Missoula out and about and more. So here is some of the new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT Channel 189. And when I come back, I'll talk to you guys about City Council, where you guys might be getting refund for surcharges uh, that you may have paid during um, any court hearings for tickets and whatnot. So, yeah, it'll, uh, I think uh, pedestrians are going to like it. So If anybody's watching and wants to go to a Russell Street renovation meeting, when are they, and where are they held? Well, we have uh, weekly meetings uh, that basically involve just the contractor and some of the stakeholders Tuesdays from uh, 9 to 1030. But the meeting that's open to the public is uh, from uh, 1 to 230, I believe, on Tuesdays. The city. in 2013 it was awesome we were so excited at the time i was working retail and that was glamorous and mike was a preschool teacher and uh he also had just started working at bigger pizza so date nights were they were a big deal few and far between yes and they were a very big deal so so we we had date night scheduled for the top hat and the top hat was um they were playing movies on, uh, I think it was Monday nights maybe. It was like Monday movie night and they were playing The Big Lebowski. It was the first time they were doing it and they were gonna, they were gonna serve white Russians. Welcome to the new Top Hat. It was, it was, it was gonna be epic. And it was date night. And it was Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit of City Council. Uh, City Council is held every uh, Monday at 7 p.m., um, excluding the fifth Monday of the month and holidays. Um, so let's start off with uh, Tom Cook during um, public comment. He talks about easier access to uh, information that uh, the city provides for the community. I am frustrated when community cheerleaders, activists, television stations, radio stations, tell us what the impact of a mill levy will be on a house of an average with an average value or a median value. Those things are not the same and the difference is important. And so if 
Perhaps the city's communications director can make a sustained effort to direct everyone, and I would love to see reference to a median value because one or two houses in Grant Creek or Lincolnwood or Lincoln Hills can really change an average value. But if we could rely on a median value, and I say that for real estate agents also, it may be more accurate information. All right, so that was Tom Cook um, uh, talking about his concerns about um, uh, having a value for homes and stuff. So John Angen, later in the meeting, he answers Tom Cook. 280000 is actually the median home price. Um, but we have in the past, and I will ask that we get it back up, we actually have a tool uh, on the web that allows you to calculate property taxes based on uh, based on the value of your home. So we'll see if we can get that back up. Uh, that county website actually has all of the detail about where uh, where municipal funds are spent as well. You have to scroll on a little bit, and we also have extensive information on the website. But what I will do is uh, a little coordination with uh, our team and see if we can't make that more prominent. Um, through the budget process, we uh, spend a lot of time talking about where the money goes. Um, and reporting on that, and we have a number of uh, fairly easy to read uh, charts that uh, I think could be helpful. All right, so John Engen mentions that. So he, they're going to be putting up a website and probably put a link onto the city's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. Um, of course, so far the average homes are separated by uh, usually it's like the 250,000 value. If you make, if your house is worth more than two hundred fifty thousand dollars, you pay, let's say, fourteen dollars for like a mill levy, and then if you're under two hundred fifty thousand dollars, you average pay seven dollars a month. So, specifically, I get the Tom Cook. You know, I I can relate to that because um, Tom Cook wants to know exactly how much each property would be worth because it's like um, different is basically a person who uh, has a home that's worth $200,000 versus somebody who has a home that's $225,000. person with $225,000 may pay maybe about 50, uh, 50 to a dollar more than uh, the person who pays 20, whose house is worth $25,000 less. And that's kind of like what they want to know exactly in terms of taxes, because it's easy to look up your home value, but also it's, you don't know how much your tax value is um, a lot of times. Um, so that's just something, especially when they reevaluate homes every two years, it's, it would be nice to know. Um, a quick access to do that as well. So the city's going to be working on that. So Bob Lucino, former ward member from back in the day, uh, wants to talk about health benefits and how uh, the city uh, could um, save um, the citizens of Missoula money by not offering such a great package for the um, people who work for the city. Suggest and remind you all that in the private sector, whether it's an employee-based health insurance plan or an individual market plan that my family's on, um, we, uh, we are in a whole different universe than what you're providing to city employees. And wow, it's a beautiful thing what you're providing to city employees. And once something's offered, it's very difficult to take it away. I understand that. But I'd like to see if you could have some serious conversations, because we're all in the real world, uh, this coming year in uh, the appropriate committees of whether the city can continue to sustain the major contribution that you are incurring uh, with employee uh, premiums. All right. So um, just to kind of give you a little bit of background, more recently the city of Missoula has offered um, health care for folks who are going through to support hormone therapy who are looking to get a gender change. That was the most recent update from what I remember um, in terms of the health care coverage for city council employees or city um, employees. Uh, many people comments have been um, paying high taxes under a fixed income. So I'm going to just kind of leave it at that. You guys can check out all the public comments on the meeting yourself. So let's move on. Jesse Ramos wants the city funds uh, towards Splash Montana to be cut altogether, and he'll tell you why. 
I was never advocating for the close of Splash Montana or the city aquatics uh, during the budget conversation when I wanted to remove $203,000 of general fund contributions to it. Actually, based on the, uh, the numbers that Councilwoman um, Anderson provided, uh, the 146,000 visits, uh, if you take that and divide it into the 200,000 I suggest we cut, it would bump up uh, people's fee uh, by $1.30 per visit. So that's simply all I was, I was suggesting, and if there are some folks that uh, cannot afford that, I would gladly work uh, with Councilwoman Anderson to start up a fund where people can voluntarily uh, raise money for a scholarship program for uh, underprivileged kids um, in a voluntary capacity, not forcing people through taxes. So just wanted to uh, toss that out there and kind of on a more solemn note, <coughs> I know it's been a little over a week. Um, All right, so um, I'm going to cut Jesse Ramos right off, right off there. Um, he uh, kind of mentions that there are a lot of city programs that are being funded every single year that if they're um, doing very well, in his opinion, they should be basically cut off from getting general funding from the city of Missoula because they are at the point of self-sustainability. Uh, so, of course... Um, September 11th, 2018, the Montana Supreme Court issued a ruling uh, finding that the city council, uh, uh, and, and this is part of the state, so it's not just Missoula, um, basically um, turn off surcharges that, uh, that may not be legally be imposed on violations of Montana state laws. Missoula plans to set up a program to refund um, upwards of $800,000 in court-ordered surcharges that the Montana Supreme Court ruled last week as illegal. So overall, the surcharges average about $220,000 per year for the past five years, with 80% of that needing to be refunded. Uh, John Engen says that surcharges are turned off in municipal courts, and this is what he has to say. There's a lot of unwinding to do here. Um, it's a lot of data and a lot of labor. So what we'll do is come back to you with, um, with what we think is the best way to proceed in making sure that folks uh, who are owed refunds get them. All right. So that was John Ingen, um saying that uh, they uh, just this law just passed last week. So the city of Missoula is like, okay, let's figure out how we're going to go approach this, but. This meeting was to recognize that they're going to have to work on this process to get this done. So the city of Missoula's uh, uh, court, uh, Judge Shanks, uh, stops by to talk about uh, how hard this undertaking is going to be. I have some concerns about when we start looking at the records going back prior to that. It might be a challenge to figure out what was paid on the surcharge as opposed to what was paid on the fine. So I have some some concerns and trepidation about going back there, um, but I don't think that we, you know, have a choice or should draw a line. Mm -hmm. We need to do that. Um, I think that since I started, certainly I think that we're going to be able to identify the exact amount. I won't say it'll be easy because unfortunately it uh, arrived or is timed with our implementation as a pilot court of a new database. Mm -hmm which is having, we're having a lot of challenges, especially on the financial side of that, because we are a pilot, which means we're kind of guinea pigs, and things need to get fixed. But I'm confident that for at least from the 2000, well, at least from the time that I was there, at least in 2012 on up, we're going to be able to identify the exact amounts. Prior to that, the policy was that, the other issue is that prior to that, the policy was that things went to collections after three months, and that's going to be a whole different struggle because we're going to have to be looking at what interest accrued on those surcharges. So that All right, so that was Judge Shanks. Okay, let me tell you about the um, undertaking that the municipal court system, Cindy Missoula, and all these things have to do. Imagine you, imagine you have to issue refunds for 15 years' worth of people that have gone through the municipal court system um, through surcharges, if they've paid surcharges, determined what and when they had money paid and now owed to them. So they, um, of course, Shanks said anything from 2012 to 2018 shouldn't be a big deal, but anything prior to that, because this uh, surcharge began in 2003, which started at $5 um, for a surcharge. And then by the end of its, uh, its tenure, um, ended with a $25 surcharge. So these surcharges, so let's say you only went to court maybe three times in the last 15 years for a ticket here and a ticket there, and there was a surcharge they had to pay. That money you're going to get back. But now the municipal court's job is to find out who's going to get it back and how much they're going to get back. 
So it's going to take it's going to be undertaking because a lot of times the court, as she said, it goes into uh, collections, then it goes into another. And there's just so many things going on there. So I kind of did the math. So imagine eight hundred thousand dollars of refunds divided in by twenty five is thirty two thousand people. But since 2003, there's the variable with the people with five dollars in 2003, which is 160 thousand dollars, 160 thousand folks who have to be issued uh, refunds for five dollars. So there's in this. Uh, um, so let's say let's cut it in half. So let's just say the medium, and let's say that it would probably be in the ballpark of 100 thousand different um, visits to uh, court hearings and each of these people, whether they would get an average of five to $25, um, depending upon how many times they had to pay this surcharge. So city has no idea uh, how they plan about going about this, but they're, uh, they're gonna be uh, taking this undertaking along with the court system. Um, so the city in the end adopted a motion to move forward with working with city's municipal court surcharges for uh, violations of provisions of Missoula Municipal Code, as well as providing a city fund policy. <coughs> so you can find out more information by going to your local government at ci.missoula.mt.us. This site is where you can find out everything about what the city's doing, what they're going to what they're going to do, and uh, if you want to look for a permit and and if you want to request a chip seal. So yeah, there's a lot going on with the city of Missoula, and if you can't find it on the city of Missoula's website, be sure to go um, to MCAT.org, and you can watch it on MCAT Channel 189 for all that information and more. There's a lot of information out there, and hey, if you're like me and maybe you've uh, had to pay a surcharge once or twice in the last uh, 15 years for one reason or another, my 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 deal's uh, parking tickets. You know, I just got a couple parking tickets over the time um, that kind of had to go through the court systems because I parked in a a place I wasn't supposed to park. Anyways, I don't want to talk about my uh, my illegal works from back in the day. Um, but I'm just saying that these surcharges will be issued as a refund, and this dates all the way back in 2003. So, who knows how many people are due a refund? So, look out for it. That's all I can say. But. I got no, I got nothing more to say in terms of that. I got a new dub and stuff for you guys. So without further ado, here is the movie, The Amazing Adventure. So you want to sell all sorts of stoves to the people? That's right, sir. <coughs> uh, Madeline, could you come over here for a second? I need some uh. Need some advice? Advice. Let me guess. You want to sell all sorts of things from our brochure, don't you? Uh, I can really do uh, Excel really well. Yeah, I'm I'm really proficient in Word Perfect. I'm an excellent ladies' man too, if that counts for anything. Uh, so what do you say? I'm very interested in this whole Excel thing. Yeah, uh, you know, not the ladies' man thing. So you want to sell stoves to the fancy people around town, do you? Well, rest assured, this is the very hardest job you can possibly do. Well, I didn't know it was that hard. You can count on me. I know exactly what I have to do to be a good salesman. You know, um, just, you know, give me a chance. You got nothing to lose. Ugh. Oh, that was a close one. Hey, darling, guess what? I just got a job. I hope you mean darling like my name and not like you're being enduring to me. Oh, no, not at all. I got a job selling ovens. Ugh. Everyone has ovens, you know that, right? Well, yes, ma'am, I know that for sure. Uh, I suppose that's good enough. It's not like seducing a lady selling them an oven. You want something from them, but it's like selling a prairie dog to a farmer. Almost impossible. Well, please excuse me while I go laugh at you in the back. Ha, 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 ha. ha, ha. Don't tell me what I can and cannot be. Anyone can be an oven salesman, but it takes a real man to know how to sell. Here's your book, and I expect this to be filled out by the end of the week. Week? Well, if you're not really, um... No, 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 no. Uh, I guarantee this will be filled out. Don't worry about that. I'll be able to uh, fill this book out really quickly. Like, um, uh, don't worry. Let's start the montage. I'm gonna sell some stuff. I'm gonna knock on the door. I'm gonna ask the person if they want some stoves. I'm gonna ask them if the price list for the Alpha... Oh, God, no, no, oh. no. Walking down the street, gonna try again, and gonna ask this lady if I could be a friend. Well, what do we see here? I mean, what do we got here? Oh, stove? Nah. Song's getting sadder, I don't know what Oh, to God, do. no, please. Times get a little bit... <coughs> oh. No, 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 no. I'm sure I'll get a yes someday. <clears throat> nah. 
I don't think so. Oh, no, no, no beatboxing, no. The skip in my step has gone away, but maybe this guy You've got to be kidding me. No. Rain is the symbol of sadness. It's like God cried tears for me. Well, it looks like you really suck at this job. I just did that for dramatic effect. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I just don't know what I'm doing wrong. Would you have any advice for someone like me just starting out? I'm just trying to have trouble selling um, ovens and everything. You know, I wandered up and down these streets, up and down, down inside, diagonal, crisscross applesauce, all sorts of things, and I just could not find anyone who wanted an advanced oven to replace their... Well, that's not the point. But we did hear complaints about a singing salesman. Um, um, I wouldn't know anything about that, my dear. Well, maybe you're just not cut out for this kind of work. Maybe you should uh, try something else. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Kicking things off is... Wait for it. Coffee. Hey, they're doing all sorts of coffee outside Missoula, various locations around Missoula. Uh, this happens basically from anybody who's bike commuting and whatnot. Um, they usually kind of end this as soon as my show starts, but I just want to tell you guys that um, a lot of they bring uh, bring camp coffee setups at those uh, intersections where uh, bikers can kind of go through, you know, like Milwaukee Trail, um, the uh, the the crossing bridge, you know, like the bike uh, the bike bridges, bike ped pedestrian bridge and stuff like that. So they provide coffee for folks who um, use alternative transportation for their morning commutes. Um, Mismo, um, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena and Roots Acro Sports Center are the place to be as early as 9.30 in the morning. Um, if you guys are interested in doing, uh, having your kids do some adult tumbling, they're in a safe padded environment where the kids could have a nice little foam pit to jump into. It's fun. And it's usually for kids who are walking to 12 years of age. Um, Tiny Tales is going to be at Empower Place, which is at the Missoula Food Bank, which is located on Wyoming Street, right kitty corner of the West Side Lanes. And it is a good way for kids to get involved with reading while at the same time being offered the great services at the Missoula Food Bank. But... Story time is also happening at Frenchtown Branch. Uh, this helps encourage young kids, um, birth to three years of age, who are interested in getting involved with books and who are interested in getting a leg up in reading. Um, Nano Science with special sh uh, guest uh, Daryl Jackson will be visiting Spectrum Discovery Center starting at 11 a.m. this today. Um, the Spectrum Discovery Center is open for all visitors of all ages to explore science through engaging exhibits and activities. Please join them at their location at 812 Tool Avenue. It's 350 for anyone four and over, but if you're under three, you get in free. Um, this week's makerspace is Spirographs. Um, they will feature scientists each day and they showcase activities related to their fields. Uh, Daryl Jackson will be in the museum from 12 to 1 p.m. today. Special uh, making activity is Ozobots, which will be in the afternoon. Uh, South Indian cuisine. If you're interested in um, after Tiny Tales, maybe you want to learn more about uh, uh, Indian cuisine. So join an an Ananda Smith uh, for the South Indian vegetarian cooking class where you can learn how to make uh, cauliflower and uh, tofu pakoras, tomato chutney, and galab jamun, a uh, traditional sweet treat of milk steeped in syrup. So, that's what's happening this afternoon, along with uh, middle school writers group. So if you uh, have a kid who's in um, grades six through nine, and you want them to improve their writing skills, and they're looking to improve their writing skills, Missoula Public Library hosts a middle school writers group every Wednesday, and then a teen writers group every Thursday around 3.30 p.m. Um, hip hop for kids three to five years of age. So if it's never too early to learn some hip hop, and Down Down Dance Collective is a nonprofit here in the city of Missoula that engages um, classes in dance, and they teach kids dance, and it's a good activity. It's fifteen dollars. Uh, it's once annually, so it's for kids who are three to five years old. It's it's pretty good. You know, it's a fifteen dollar registration fee, and it, yeah, it's a pretty good deal. Um, of course, they have. Um, they're going to have fall sessions of this class, which happen from September 12th through December 9th, Wednesdays 4 to 4.45, and no classes on, of course, Thanksgiving. Uh, financial legal planning, Alzheimer's, dementia, cognitive, uh, First Lutheran Church is going to do a mouthful of things uh, to uh, of a workshop by Marsha 
Godin to learn what legal and financial steps should be taken before diagnosis of Alzheimer's related dementias or cognitive impairments and what alternatives are left after diagnosis. So I had Missoula Agent Service on here the other day and they talked about health and planning for the future. So if you have a history of Alzheimer's or dementia, you have to, it's always good to have a kind of a, a plan for your health in the future about how people should treat you and how you wish to be treated later in your life, depending upon how far you're gone up here. Um, artists on Gustin, uh, John Buck and Jay Schmidt it is going to be at the Missouri Art Museum. Missouri Art Museum uh, um, is a great um, expression. It's free admission, um, free expression, and it has become a part of an unfolding conversation at MAM this fall. Artist John Buck and Jay Schmidt will engage artists and the public in a, a, a moder um, moderated discussion that will investigate the aesthetic and formal qualities and art historical context of Guston's Arctic practice and 1869's painting Cigar, followed by a dynamic Q&A. It's free and open to the public, and it starts at 6 p.m. tonight. Um, here are some of the events that are happening um, for your night. If you're interested in going to see um, Miyazaki films, uh, the Roxy is hosting a Miyazaki um, marathon where they're showing all of Miyazaki's animated um, films. Um, and tonight they're going to be playing Ponyo at 8 p.m. at the Roxy. Trivial Beer Suit will be at the Press Box. Um, um, tri trivia Night at the Silver Slipper will start at 7.30 p.m. Uh, karaoke is going to be at the Dark Horse Bar and, of course, karaoke at the Batlander. And those are some of your nights, uh, some of your events that are happening Wednesday night. I got your Thursday events happening right after this art clip. <laughs> A lot of good art. Are you, I mean, all you can do is check it out by the end of September 28th, and I believe that is going to be at the Clay Studio of Missoula, so you can check that out anytime. Let's move on. Time for some Thursday events. If you're interested in doing some family fun time at the YMCA, YMCA does this starting the school year from 9 a.m. to about 11.30 a.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Fridays, they have afternoon from about 3.30 to 5. Um, they believe families need a place to play together. Family fun time at the Y provides an indoor all-weather play place for parents are welcome to join in the fun. Bounce houses, um, tumbling mats, scooters, hula hoops, and more. All this provided at the YMCA off Russell. Um, music, music Together classes, Rocky Mountain School of Ballet Theater. Um, music Together classes are starting. And if you're interested in joining the um, fall semester, it is a three, I think it's a three-month commitment. And they're looking for um, people and their kids for uh, zero to five years and their grown-ups. And it's offer Thursday, Friday mornings. Um, operating system Ubuntu at Missoula Public Library. Come lose about Ubuntu. It's an open space Linux based operating system that offers users a host of free software tools and customization of their user experience. And topics we'll cover include navigation of Ubuntu, uh, desktop environments, and system settings, as well as the overall free programs that are an alternative to paid software suites. Registration is required by calling 721 Book, otherwise known as 721. 2665. Again, that number is 
2665. And this happens from 12 to 1 p.m. in the computer classroom tomorrow. Um, holiday job fair. Southgate Mall is doing a holiday job fair. Hey, they're looking for Santas and people to work the holiday season. Um, holiday season is a good time for a lot of people to hire some more people, seasonal workers, um, if you're interested in doing that and you're looking for maybe a part-time job as you're transitioning to another job. It's a find of great employments for this holiday season, whether you're looking for seasonal work or full-time job. Um, you'll find a qualify, quality employers who are eager to hire through Missoula to register your business. And for more information, you can call Missoula Do Job Services at 728-7060. Again, that number is 728-7060. And this is just a good way to engage with the public and just see who is interested in getting their job. Mantis Molt Sun Catchers at Missoula Insectarium. When anthropod molds leave their behind the layers of old exoskeletons, these exoskeletons return to the ground like at all organic materials and will decompose and add nutrients back into the soil. Join Missoula Insectarium, um, MissoulaBloodFlyHouse.org, for more about the cycle of life and make a fun craft you can bring home with you. What safety net? Uh, dis uh, discussing cuts to the mental health partner uh, partnership healthcare uh, Weinberg Room will be doing a free public forum with an information uh, informative panel discussion regarding the effects of budget cuts and mental health care systems on Missoula and what they can be done to moderate by Susan Hay Patrick from United Way. So she'll, you'll be asking questions to her, and there's going to be uh, apparently there's some budget cuts happening within the mental health care system. So you can go to this meeting at 6 p.m. in the partnership healthcare in the Weinberg Group to discuss this and more. Hey, it's state night in Missoula Insectarium. You can drop off your kids with the Insectarium for two-hour educational programs, and then you can spend two hours however you please, starting at 6 p.m. at the Missoula Insectarium for uh, $1 off drinks at the Dram Shop across the street. They highly encourage you to head there blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, and this is uh, $15 for a child, $10 for each additional sibling. So if you have three kids, it'll be 35 bucks. Um, <laughs> ages uh, 4 to 11, welcome. Uh, but of course, they must be potty trained. No, they won't change your kid's diaper for you. Just They're just basically saying that. Uh, Big Sky's um, film series presents The Birds. MCT Center for Foreign Arts, in conjunction with the Big Sky um, film series, presents free community screening ev events uh, featuring new and informative documentary films. Um, this Thursday, MCT, uh, for the fall season opener for The Birds, Kathy lives with 200 pet chickens, ducks, geese, and turkeys. Uh, what starts as a story seemingly about Kathy's battle with local animal advocacy groups slowly transforms into an intimate drama about her relationship with her husband, Gary, and the toll the birds have taken on the marriage as well as her well-being. Um, filmed over the course of five years, the sensitive tale of one woman's world-breaking um, uh, world breaking down, poignant and absor um, absorbing in uh, equal measures, is ultimately one of, the, of hope about the possibility of regaining one's life. Director Richard Mirren will be in attendance, so you can ask him a Q&A about this. So I think this is pretty cool. Big Life Documentary Film Festival has been doing a couple uh, sessions and being kind of like getting people um, ready for the uh, Big Side Documentary Film Festival that will be kicking off in February. So they've been doing a couple workshops and a couple things happening over the last couple um, months. Um, so you can check all that out and more by logging on to MissoulaEvents.net. Um, here are some of the events that are happening for your Friday night. If you're interested in doing some karaoke, Dark Horse is the place to be. If you're looking to d enjoy some hip hop, you can go to the Top Hat. It's uh, Charlie uh, Tuna. Uh, Far Out will be at the Wilma, the, a film by uh, Teton Gravity Research, Winter Sports. Perfect Blue will be at the Roxy's, a film. Um, Grizz Glow Yoga will be at the University of Montana. It's a fitness class, so I, I'm assuming you wear um, plenty of things with sul sulfur that uh, light up uh, when you're doing yoga. So they'll have a night yoga, glow yoga. So imagine a rave, but with um, yoga. Yeah. I think th I think that's what they're kind of going for, and that's going to be at the University of Montana. Um, anyways, those are some of your events that are happening. Um, if you're interested in finding out more about events, you go to MissoulaEvents.net. This is where I get all of my information from about what's going on in Missoula. Hey, guys, what's going on in Missoula? This is what's going on, MissoulaEvents.net. If you're interested in finding out more about my show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. It's a nice we made you write it out twice. Um, it's a great resource for everything from past interviews, um, past shows, and uh, fun short videos that I've made, including dubbing stuff, and, of course, your uh, Saturday shorts. And I'll be bringing back um, 
Flagship Fridays next week. Uh, also, if you're interested in finding uh, your local government in your videos, uh, MCAT uh, shoots all the local videos from the city of Missoula, and all you got to do is go to MCAT.org to access all those, either th through Channel 189 or 190. All those websites and more available at the touch of your computer. Um, and if you want to find out more information about me, all you got to do is Google Wake Up Missoula and you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and more. All you got to do is look for the Wake Up Missoula. The last best morning show ends right now. So thanks for joining me and I hope you guys have a, next, a great couple of days. This Friday I'll have a bunch of fun videos for to show you guys and I'm excited to show you. So I'll see you Friday. Mm -hmm.